Good morning, saints. Good morning. And welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. Special welcome today to those of you who are joining us online. And also this morning, we are blessed to welcome our friends from St. John's East Windsor. Where are you? There you are. Welcome to Grace. Everything you need for today's service is in your service leaflet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. His mercy is yours forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third or in the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife 
or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 19. Let us read responsively using the asterisk. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his name. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, their sound has gone out into all lands. And their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The Lord is clear and gives light to the eye. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. And innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. redeemer. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discernings I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
back off so we can you know, so Shannon can go in front of the room and we go in front of the The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Gospel of John is sometimes referred to as the Book of Signs, and the entire Gospel narrative is framed around these signs, changing water into wine, healing the royal official's son, healing the paralytic, feeding the 5,000, walking on water, healing the blind man, raising Lazarus. The signs aren't just miracles. They invite us to see and explore the meaning of Jesus as both the Son of Man, with all the human joys and heartaches that entails, and the Son of God, who both inspires celebration and, on occasion, instigates confrontation. It's these signs that guide us in our journeys, whether through Advent or Lent, whether to Bethlehem or to Jerusalem or to Emmaus, as we discover the presence of God as Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus came to replace the pillars of existence with himself. And perhaps nowhere in the Gospels do we see Jesus doing that more spectacularly than in the scene from this morning's Gospel in which Jesus steps into what was commonplace, everyday life in the Jerusalem temple. It's a scene in which we see Jesus in his prophetic role, aligning himself with the great prophets of the Hebrew Bible, who took on the powers and principalities and called them to be more faithful to the values of God. But lest we get too comfortable, we should, should note well that in this morning's passage, it's not the powers and the principalities that Jesus is taking on. No, the people driven out in this morning's passage are the relatively common folk, the money changers and the livestock salesmen, those whose, toler whose tables were tolerated, if not encouraged, by the temple authorities, who should have known better. The temple authorities were committed to building up institutions, 
to proclaim and embody the word of God. And yet, in building up the institution, they had somehow managed to accommodate money changers in the temple. Now to be sure, the system was probably never wholly cynical, a cynical exploitation of God's name that was set up to de de desecrate the sanctity of the temple. These weren't bad people. It is far more likely that all involved had simply settled into comfortable behaviors that enabled them to meet their institutional goals, turning an increasingly blind eye to the unsavory possibilities of corruption inherent in changing money in the temple. The equivalent in today's church would be paying more attention to fundraising than furthering God's mission of restoration and reconciliation. The people Jesus is angry with today is the entire institution, including the people in the pews, if you will. It seems to me that the message for us is to realize that both the prophetic voice and the institution of the church are necessary. The same preachers and lay leaders who are responsible for maintaining the health of the institution are also responsible for carrying out the word of God and responding to that prophetic impulse, summoning both the church and the outside world to do better than we do, to be better than we are. Without the institution, that message can be lost. So how do we strike a balance? That always involves a certain level of discomfort. Surely there is a part of each of us that hears this passage and feels the call to take up our own whip of cords, to take on our favorite principalities and powers, circumstances in which and people in whom we witness hypocrisy, injustice, and the misappropriation of God's own name. For me, Christian nationalists come to mind. But in this season of Lent, it's important for us to tolerate and explore through prayer, reflection, repentance, and preparation, the queasy anxiety of seeing Jesus with the whip of cords in his hands and hearing him with the righteous judgments of God on his lips, knowing that he speaks for us and with us, but also to us, and perhaps even when the shoe occasionally fits against us. The word made flesh is the beautiful sign of incarnation, but it is a proclamation of something more. It's the miraculous disruption of the world's status quo which Jesus speaks of when he shouts, stop making my father's house a marketplace. He doesn't just criticize the dishonest and shady practices of vendors selling the necessary wares for appropriate temple worship. He announces that he is there to challenge and even take down the entire structure. Destroy this temple, Jesus says to the leaders who ask him for a sign, and in three days, I will raise it up. Jesus, Jesus isn't talking about changing the policies around who sells what and how or when. This isn't about reforming temple practices. He wants to turn over tables, yes, but also to turn over the pillars of the, the very pillars of existence through his very existence. Jesus wants us to reimagine everything we know about society, the world, and yes, even our beloved church, and see and experience them through the prism of his life and teachings. This morning's gospel passage is an invitation to reimagine what it means to be the body of Christ in the world. Jesus invites us to re-examine the various institutions in which we live and move and have our being. The way our communities are structured, the way our churches function, the fairness with which our business and banking systems operate, the equity or lack of it in our local educational systems. Just as Jesus called into question the temple practices, he summons us to ask ourselves, do these systems all build up the body of Christ? Do they nurture us into becoming the beloved community that Jesus envisioned? Or, 
Do they instead perpetuate ancient inequities and injustices that may actually work to some of our individual benefits, but work to limit the opportunities of some of our neighbors who historically have been left out or marginalized? A couple of local examples. A front page article from the Hartford Current looked at the histories of two local communities, West Hartford and Bloomfield. West Hartford historically used practices such as restrictive covenants and deeds, zoning regulations, and redlining to come to be perceived as desirable, wealthy, and yes, white. Bloomfield, on the other hand, chose to embrace diversity and with the success of their efforts, was named an all-American city. A second example. Throughout our nation and in a number of our neighboring communities, including my hometown of Glastonbury, we have over the past several years seen an increasing debate over the use of Native American mascots for athletic teams. The age-old tomahawks symbol, it wasn't even a person, it was a tomahawk, uh, with which my mother, Class Murray High School class of 39, and I, Class Murray High School class of 68, grew up with has given way to a new name, the Guardians. As was undoubtedly the case with the money changers and merchants in the temple precincts, the way things were seemed perfectly normal and okay to many. But they were in fact deeply hurtful to many others among us whose voices until recently have not been heard. In our own Episcopal Church in Connecticut, you all are probably aware that in October 2018, our annual convention passed a resolution creating a two-year season of racial healing, justice, and reconciliation. At the diocesan convention in November 2020, realizing that two years wasn't nearly enough, by a 94% vote, our convention adopted a follow-up resolution entitled Acknowledging and Confronting Systemic Racism, White Supremacy, and anti-black bias in our nation and the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. Among other things, that resolution established a reparations task force for the Episcopal Church in Connecticut and required local vestries to be trained and um, uh, required local vestries to report annually on what each congregation is doing to implement the provisions of that resolution. There were lots of other provisions of that, like each parish should be doing a parish history to investigate its own um, uh, participation in racism and slavery. And at the age, the year that this church was built, this church would be one of them. It also required training on, on racial disparities and all sorts of things for those serving in elected positions. And each vestry was required to report each year what they're doing to further this. Finally, this past November, our diocesan convention passed with overwhelming support a resolution establishing a reparations fund for racial reparations and committing the sum of $2.5 million this year to be supported until it reaches a sum of $12 million as partial compensation for the shameful role that the Episcopal Church in Connecticut played in the institution of slavery and of systematically segregating out persons of color. These actions of our conventions are an acknowledgement of the powerful statement that Jesus is making in this morning's gospel story. Jesus, the word made flesh who dwelt among us, came to replace the temple made with human hands with the temple of his own body. He says it clearly and succinctly, several times throughout John's Gospel. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd, the true vine, the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. I am here, Jesus says. Follow me. Jesus' message through the words of John's Gospel is twofold. The work of the temple is to be the 
house of God, a place of prayer, adoration, and worship that transforms human lives into holy action. But that is only the beginning, the place where we are fed and strengthened and renewed so that we, too, can play a, that prophetic role in the world, to transform a world that, in the words of John, did not know him, into a world that looks more like the beloved community that Jesus came to establish. I'd like to close with a prayer, which actually is a verse from a hymn that I wanted us to sing this morning until I learned that we don't have that hymn. So I won't, I won't kill you by singing it, but I will say the words. <laughs> God, the unexpected infant. God, the calm, determined youth. God, the table-turning prophet. God, the resurrected truth. You were present every moment. We are searching. Meet us now. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And in the assurance of, God faith, of God's faithfulness, let us pray in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We give you thanks for the beauty and order of our world. We give thanks for special pl holy places and for our own church. Through them, may we learn awe and respect for your world. We ask you to guide all leaders of worship, to inspire all preachers of the word, to direct your faithful people in the ways of holiness and peace, especially the Church of the Province of Uganda, Christ Church Cathedral, Hartford, Good Shepherd, Hartford, Grace Church, Hartford, St. Martin's, Hartford, Prison Ministry and Prison Chaplains, the ECCT, ECCT Faith Behind Bars and Beyond Ministry Network. Lord, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. We pray for all legislators for those who set standards for us to live by. Guide all those who influence the mind of others. 
We pray for broadcasters, the press, for political leaders. We pray for all dealing in world trade, in commerce or industry. Give to each the wisdom and will to use properly what you have given them. Lord, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. We give thanks for those who have shared with us a sense of wonder or mystery. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jeff, our bishop diocesan, and for Laura, our bishop suffragan. We pray that we may learn to live simply and to be willing to help others to simply live. Lord, protect us, our homes and loved ones. Be with all who have been made homeless, with your people who have recently left home. Lord, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. We pray for all who have become possessed by possessions for all who are captive to greed and covetousness. We remember all who have suffered through the selfishness of others. Be a strength, O Lord, to all who have suffered robbery or violence, for all who have faced the murder of a loved one. We pray for all who have lost their possessions or livelihood, for those who are facing bankrupt. We pray for all who are ill at this time, especially those listed in this bulletin. Lord, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. We give thanks for all who have faithfully obeyed your will, for all who have worshiped you in the beauty of holiness. We give thanks for those who founded this church. We pray for loved ones departed, especially Ruth Jeffress and Judy Kay. Grant that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Almighty God, creator of all things, we give you thanks for the resources of our world, for the wonders and mysteries of the universe. Lord, help us to use wisely all you have given to us for the benefit of others, for the well-being of the earth, and to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Standing or kneeling or sitting as you are able, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May Almighty God, who desires not the death of sinners, but that we repent, return to the Lord, and live. Have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Serve the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Thank you. 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Welcome. Peace be with you. 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 I don't think we have anyone to do healing first, like because Debbie's out yeah, and Bob is Bob out. Is I don't think anyone else is in this. Okay. Can do it. So just don't announce it. Okay. Or that means that we're not doing it. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, why don't I invite? Okay, I'll, I'll offer to do it myself. Yeah. Peace be with you. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Peace be with you. How are you? Good to be back. Good to be back. Peace be with you. Peace to you. Good to see you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. How are you? Good morning. Peace be with you. 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 Good morning. Peace be with you. Peace, Kathy. Good to see you. Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't touch from between here and here. <laughs> yeah. Peace, Gloria. <laughs> so again, welcome all. Um, and a word, if uh, you're worshiping with us for the first time today, please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, you're fully welcome here at Grace uh, to participate fully in the service, to receive communion, and we're absolutely blessed that you're here with us this morning. Again, we want to welcome our friends from St. John's in East Windsor. Um, I won't embarrass you and ask you to get up and say anything right now, but uh, we do invite everyone to coffee hour where we can meet our friends who are joining us today. Um, and there is coffee hour, so, and I saw lots of good stuff out on that table. So, um, we do, um, all three people who normally do healing prayers during communion are not with us. This, well, they're alive, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> they're just not here at church this morning. Um, is there anybody in the congregation who feels comfortable offering that prayer? Um, and if, I don't want to put anybody on the spot either. Um, I'll be available following the service um, once I get finished greeting everyone. If you'd like intercessory prayer, healing prayer, or whatever. Um, just kind of hang behind to let me know, and, and we can do that um, after everybody's gone off to coffee hour. Um, other announcements? Dave, I think you have a bunch. Uh, Debbie Hutchinson called me this morning saying she's not feeling so well and didn't know what she had, but thought she'd best not be here. But she sent some uh, notices to Dave. So on behalf of Debbie, um, she wanted to let everyone know that um, Canon uh, Haddock will meet with the vestry on Tuesday, March 12th, and on March 17th, he'll be the officiant at Holy Eucharist, and we will be moving towards pastoral search, and it will be, um, and then we'll get recommendations from the diocese. Um, the second um, announcement I was asked to read uh, from Debbie is um, that the Hutchinsons would be very much like us to be at the funeral service for Lillian's father this coming Saturday, so please support in any way you can. And as noted in our uh, prayers of the people, um, that Ruth Jeffries uh, passed away this past Thursday, so please pray for her family. Thank you, Dave. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so it's a little awkward after our sermon, our sermon this morning, but uh, I'm up here because um, the scouts are uh, gearing up for our next fundraiser. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> we are hosting a pasta supper on April 20th. Um, it's $15 per ticket. It's between 5 and 7.30 p.m., um, and we are starting to sell the tickets. I have tickets with me today um, for my two scouts, Shannon and Aiden, um, but there's also... Um, tickets in the office, so if you don't have money today or if you would prefer to go through 
um, Bonnie through the office, she has a set of tickets as well. Um, so again, it's $15, it's April 20th, it's a Saturday night. If you're interested, you can come see me. And just to be clear, Jesus didn't condemn all funders. <laughs> Jesus realized the temple needed to be funded. Just wanted to make sure that our purposes were always clear. And, and <laughs> it's, that's right, it's not covered. And God knows the Scots do wonderful work, and, and you guys do wonderful work leading them. So thank you. Any other announcements for the good of the order? Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself. Whoa, oh, yes. <laughs> Lift high the hand. I just want to um, welcome all of the people from St. John's because I asked um, the people who were doing the coffee, and sometimes they don't know where to go. So I'm just letting you know that there is a coffee hour, and if anybody wants to come back here who's never been here, please walk through these doors and go to your right. And you all can say that you came to Grace Church so people could tell you where to go. <laughs> yes. Yes, Karen, uh, acolyte training. It's good to get up and exercise that knee. Yeah. <laughs> I was told I was unforgettable, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I would like to welcome our guests here today as well. I am in charge of the acolytes up on the altar. I would like to also welcome Otoko Amate. And I want to tell you that today is her very first day. I corralled her last week. She was coming in for training. But I, was, I needed an acolyte for today, and I corralled her for today, and look at how well she is doing. I want you to know that you do not need training to do this job. And I would also like to remind you that adults may do this as well. You'll see our senior, senior acolyte up there next week, uh, Chuck Drake. We are going to have training, though, on um, the 10th, March the 10th, right after church. So if you know of anyone that's interested, um, please make sure they come and see me and we'll meet them after church. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. I forgot to ask with everything else going on, are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or other special dates in the congregation today? I see a hand. Why don't you stand up and give us your name and what day your birthday was? Congratulations. Nice. Nice. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Okay, let us say our celebration prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes. Okay. Yes, I will say it for the people who are at home who couldn't hear that, um, which is why we all need to go to the, the microphone. I watched the service from home last week, and again, I want to thank Ian for filling in at the last minute. Um, but when people say things and they're not mic'd, what you hear is So um, remember, we always need to come up. For, but that's such a great uh, short announcement. Um, I will say it. Uh, there's a long page in here for uh, um, uh, supporting Camp Hispaniola uh, in Haiti. It's a, it's a ministry of one of our uh, ECCT members, Mark Eve Regis, and we're, our role in this is to, to bring underwear, and I assume that means socks, t-shirts, and undergarments, whatever. Whatever you think is underwear, buy it. Um, and we have uh, just two more weeks, right? The 18th is the last Sunday. Kathy? The 18th? The 18th is the last Sunday? 
March 9th. Okay, thank you. All right. So yeah, there's a whole page on it in the thing. Okay, now, are we clear? <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering of a sacrifice to God.
come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of grace which you prepared for those who love you. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. As Jesus and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your own creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Bread of heaven. Very excited. For healing. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thank you. 
you can drink the whole cup. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 They didn't receive. They didn't receive. They didn't. They didn't receive. They just got a blessing. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve the body and soul of Jesus Christ. Amen. but not least. Please stand or kneel as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God give you grace to do God's will. Christ lead you into the ways of truth. The Spirit guide you in your dealings. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.
Let us go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go off to the cookies. Good morning. Thank you, you too. Hey guys. I'm feeling okay. I heard you were a little ill. You feeling better? No, I had surgery on my right arm. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was the nerve. Oh, okay. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Let me just shut this guy off. <laughs>